Hello and welcome to the Capital Wasteland, more specifically, to Fort Independence. Throughout this outcast stronghold are a number of small details that we can discover, and now that I have, I present to you 5 secrets you may have missed in Fallout 3's Fort Independence. Starting us off we have outcast defender Morgan. She guards the lower road leading into the fort and our first interaction has the player teaming up to repel the small force of invading raiders, or idly standing by to enjoy the show. Keep your head down, idiot! Raider incoming! Either way, Morgan will be fine and can be spoken to. Like all outcast members, she has the same values when it comes to dealing with wastelanders. Great, here's some of the local wildlife. Hey local, shouldn't you be banging rocks together or something? Why don't you go bother the Brotherhood or something? However, if your intelligence is high enough, you will have the opportunity to elaborate on her comparison of Elder Lions to Moby Dick. Huh? And here I thought we had the only remaining copy of that. Anyway. I don't know if the old man's going to die from them, but he sure as hell looks like he's going to drag his soldiers down with him. But he's not wasting any of our time anymore, damn it. It's not too far of a stretch to assume that Vault 101 had a copy of the book that could have been used during one of Broch's lessons. Both the fort's main and sub-level entrances are off-limits. They can be picked, but the outcasts inside will become hostile and try to kill the player. This can be avoided by speaking to Protector Kazdin, who, at first, doesn't like the player. There's a surprise. Kazdin has a unique proposal for the player. Bring pieces of technology and in return choose from a selection of payments. Alien power cells, power armor, laser and plasma weapons are all accepted, as well as scrap metal, but the exchange rate for that really isn't worth it when you consider Walter from Megaton, who pays 10 caps per piece. The rewards to choose from are 5.56mm ammunition, frag grenades, radaway, or stim packs. After enough technology and scrap has been exchanged, a new piece of dialogue will appear. So are we good? Do you trust me enough now? To which he replies, You've definitely proven your worth. I'll make sure to tell our people on patrol that you're a friend of the outcasts. And now the player can explore the fort without being attacked. But you still have to pick the lock or pickpocket a key from Kazdin, Morgan, or Rockfowl. Did you know that if the player approaches Kazdin while wearing a suit of outcast power armor, he will say this? I see you've got some of our power armor there. I'll just take that off your hands. I'm sure you just found it in the wastes and you're returning it to us, right? Because you'd have to be a real moron to try to turn it in for pay. Now let's see what else you've got. This leaves the player a little exposed and around 50 pounds lighter. Once enough trust has been gained through trading, he'll stop this and no longer confiscate the armor. Once inside the fort, the player can find a lone terminal with some interesting field reports regarding a potential intelligence leak and the raider activity from the nearby ruins of Fairfax. The only thing out of the ordinary is the voice of Protector Kazdin. If we listen closely, we can clearly hear the difference between the Kazdin outside and the Kazdin on the audio log. We have secured the building and are currently implementing our orders for the occupation of Fairfax. Raider activity in town has increased since we first took up positions in and around the fort. We've killed a lot of them and scared off others, but they just keep coming back. Their numbers seem limitless while requests for our own reinforcements are repeatedly denied. That the Raiders take such continued risks to invade our facility appears to confirm suspicions that we've had an intelligence leak. They've tried tenaciously to infiltrate the base, but so far haven't stood a chance. Our objective remains the same. Protect the research personnel. Be careful. These can pack quite a pop. I think it's safe to assume that Kazdin's original voice actor was replaced sometime during the game's production. And lastly, it's no secret that the Outcasts and Brotherhood of Steel don't see eye to eye. The Outcasts have reverted to their original mission of gathering advanced technology, while Elder Lions turned his attention to helping Project Purity and discovering the source of the Super Mutants. A certain Star Paladin Cross of the Brotherhood can be recruited as a follower and taken to Fort Independence. 
As long as she remains as the player's companion, there will be no conflict between the two factions. That is, until you decide you no longer require her services. Hostile! Targets acquired. Where? I've got plenty more. Come on! Man, I was getting revved too. Great. Here's some of the local wildlife. Why don't you go swing that somewhere else? And there we have it. Five secrets you may have missed in Fallout 3's Fort Independence. Before you go, I would like to remind you of five things you could do to support the channel. Comment, like, share, subscribe, and enable notifications. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next adventure.